Okay, I'm going to start. Well, first of all, uh, what's up? Thank you for tuning in to another video on Ron's Library and Ideas. Uh, first thing I want to give is a, uh, a thank you to my family that always uh, let me delve into my acquisitive nature. They always encourage that because it was asking questions that really got me to the state that I am today. Um, so let me start off with a quote. And this is from one of my favorite books by Frank Herbert, which is Dune. And it says, proper teaching is recognized with ease. You can know it without fail because it awakens within you that sensation which tells you this is something you have always known. And I think that's a really powerful statement because when you learn something that is true, uh, you hear something that resonates with you, that your soul is ready for, it does kind of feel like you already knew this. You know, not to get too raunchy, but um, <laughs> when I was in the third grade, we were out at recess and there was a group of guys and girls together and the girls are out there they were explaining what oral sex was to the guys. I was in that group. Now, every other guy in that group was like, ugh, that's nasty. But me and my third grade mind, I was like, no, that sounds like a really good idea. And for me, when I think about that quote I just read from Dune, that's one of the first things that pops into my mind because that was a completely foreign idea. Never even thought of it before. But when they brought that up, it was like, oh, okay. Nah, 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 I'm with it. That that sounds like a good idea. And you know, I say all that to uh, to get to the, the main topic of this video, uh, the world sphere of the black Hebrew. And Kanye West, you no, know, I can't speak to his, his motivations for making the comments he's been making these past couple of weeks. But it has ignited and started the conversation that we should have been having. Um, and that conversation that has so many people so worried, it's about our true origins on this planet, who we are, what our bloodline goes back to. Now, there was a point in time on the planet where everybody here looked like uh, black people. Everybody was melanated, right? every other race of people that you see on the planet now is birthed from us. So, by bloodline, you know, we can all trace our roots back to a, uh, to a certain place. And I think that's powerful because, you know, the people that we see who are, uh, quote unquote, the leaders of the world, I don't think they're the real leaders of the world. I think the people who are really pulling the strings sit somewhere off in the background and they put their lackeys out front for us to get upset and mad at. Now, the word that's being thrown around at Kanye and Kyrie Irving is anti-Semitic. And Kyrie Irving was just a sort of intro because he shared a, a video or a picture on his Twitter. That's uh, from Hebrews to black or something like that or from Hebrews to Negroes. And it's again, it's about the origins of black people being the original Hebrews. Um, the powers that be, the people that sit in the background that we don't see, um, the ones that you've never heard of, the way they control the world is through our ignorance, right? So it's like the things that we don't know can be used against us. And one of the main things they don't want us to know is just how extraordinary each and every one of you are. Like if you're, if you're watching this video, um, you have powers. You are extraordinary. That's the simplest way I can put it. If you've seen The Matrix, you are Neo in The Matrix. It's our thoughts that shape this reality. And we're down here doing that collectively together. And another key thing to realize is that this is a very individual thing. It's not going to be like all of us coming together and making some change happen. What's going to happen is it's going to be enough individuals gaining knowledge of self and learning about themselves and having that curiosity that's going to change the vibration of this place. Um, we really can't be focused on 
what everyone else is doing. Your main focus should be yourself. Your main focus should be your journey. What do you have to do? What are you curious about? Um, I've always loved reading ever since I, I learned how. And you know, I think it was my sister who first taught me how to read because I don't remember when I learned. It just seemed like something I always knew how to do. But I know my sister used to play school and she might have been the first person to really start pushing that on me. But this is a book by one of my favorite teachers, Brother Panic. This is his newest book, uh, The Seven Laws of Dark Power, Volume 2, Self Master. Be a master of self, right? So a quote that stands out to me in this book, he says, my personal self-realization is my only true challenge here. This is your spiritual work. This isn't about struggling with the emotional guilt of every suffering black man and woman on planet Earth. It's also not about you dealing with endless American problems you've inherited by others who defined your struggle for you. The only true chore here is mastering the mind. When you master your mind, you master everything else. And that's a process that I'm still going through myself, learning how to master my mind. And it's an ongoing thing. It doesn't just happen all at once. Um, whenever your enemy can get you reacting emotionally to something, they have control over you. Keep that in mind. Um, the power of celebrity, like these celebrities can say something and it starts such a firestorm because we're living so much of our lives vicariously through them. And that's a good and a bad thing. You know, the good thing is a celebrity says something like Kyrie Irving or Ye, and it gets people talking. Now, the bad thing is uh, we don't always pay attention to the correct thing. Uh, we don't always find those nuances. Now, you can't leave it up to somebody else to find this out for you. You're going to have to go and find out for yourself. You're going to have to read it for yourself to know. It's not good enough just to take someone's word for it. Now, earlier I was telling you how uh, you're special, you have powers, you have abilities that you can't, that you're not even aware of right now. And there's a bunch of different sources that say that same thing. They just say it in different ways. So to turn you on to some of those things and to, you know, maybe pique your curiosity, I brought some books that I have in my library. Now, second book I want to tell you guys about is called The Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ. Notice how they say the Christ because Christ is a title and it's a title that you earn after going through an initiation. So the back of it says, the story of Jesus, the man from Galilee and how he attained the Christ consciousness open to all men. A complete record of the lost 18 years so strangely silent in the New Testament. A period spent traveling and learning from the masters, seers, and wise men in the temples and schools of Tibet, Egypt, India, Persia, and Greece. Now, you may not have noticed, but in the Bible, it does skip a lot of years and Jesus comes back and he's able to do all these amazing things. But one of the things that I, that I find key is that Jesus said, Behold, you will do greater works than me. And he was healing the sick, raising the dead, walking on water, turning uh, water into wine. Uh, like he said, you will do greater works than me. If you want to find out more about that, read this book. Um, you have abilities. You know, it's funny. Um, I went through a process for both of my fraternities. And it's an initiation process, right? You come in, you don't know very much, you come out, you've learned some things once you get to the other side of that. Now, what's funny is that the initiation process that you see fraternities and sororities going through now is a very watered down version of what Jesus was going through, through his initiation process. Except when he got out, he was able to do some pretty amazing things. But since we've lost that knowledge, we lost that, that true, uh, our true identity, 
you know, now we come out and, you know, we've accomplished something, but it's not that one true goal of that Christ consciousness. Um, another good book that talks about that is The Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall. Now, that's saying some of the same thing as well about who we are and how you're really just a soul. Now, there's a fear of that idea of the black Hebrew, because like I said, once black people start to realize who we were, who we are, it's like a slippery soap. We start discovering one thing, then we keep digging, we find more and more and more. And eventually, it's my idea that we get to the point where we've learned so much that we're like, oh, okay, we've done this for millions of years already. We can move on to something next. We can go on to what's beyond this place. And I really think it's a, it has to do with like a vibration. Like when you're vibrating in fear and worry and anger and jealousy, that keeps you on a certain level in this physical plane. But once you really start vibrating on that love frequency, this entire thing changes. So Ye and I and Kyrie talking about our Hebrew origins, you know, they want to put a stamp on that so quickly and stop other celebrities from talking about it. That's why you see them attacking Ye and Kyrie so much in the media to serve as an example to other people who have some influence who are celebrities. Hey, don't start talking about this or we'll do the same to you. It's a game and the game is to keep you ignorant of who you truly are. Um, one of the chapters in here is on the ancient mysteries and secret societies. Now it says, the soul of man, often called psyche, and in the Elysium, Elysium mystery system, symbolized by Persephone, is essentially a spiritual thing. Its true home is in the higher worlds, where, free from the bondage of material form and material concepts, it is said to be truly alive and self-expressive. The human or physical nature of man, according to this doctrine, is a tomb, a quagmire, a false and impermanent thing, the source of all sorrow and suffering. Suffering. Plato describes the body as the structure of the soul, and by this he means not only the human form, but also the human nature. So like your true essence, your true self is your soul, like your body. This is just the body that I'm riding around in right now. But when I leave here, I leave this body behind and you go on to, like I said, something better. Your soul came down from up on high and it came down into the physical. And this is where you have to go through those trials and tribulations of figuring out or finding your way back to source or back to God. That's the challenge that you get when you come down here. And like I said, once you start discovering, okay, well, if we're the original Hebrews, you know, that's a slippery slope of finding out where there's some deeper things that go along with it. Continuing, it says, the gloom and depression of the lower mysteries represented the agony of the spiritual soul unable to express itself because it has accepted the limitations and illusions of the human environment. Illusion. Meaning, things aren't what they seem. Not saying that it's not real, but you're not seeing it for everything that it is. The crux of the Elysian argument was that man is neither better nor wiser after death than during life. If he does not rise above ignorance during his sojourn here, man goes at death into eternity to wander about forever, making the same mistakes which he made here. If he does not outgrow the desire for material possessions here, he will carry it with him into the invisible world where, because he can never gratify the desire, he will continue in endless agony. Now, I don't know if I quite agree with that part. Um, you do need to start your learning when you're down here. But if you don't, you know, that's when you start that uh, reincarnation cycle or reincarceration. And again, that's that's up to your soul. Your soul may have decided, well, this lifetime I'm going to come down here and I'm going to be ignorant of all these things. I'm going to live my life in a different way. And that may be what your soul needs. 
But if you have a curiosity about these things, uh, if you have something inside you that's telling you, you know, that sounds interesting. Maybe I need to, to look more into that. Don't let your conscious mind sway you from that. Look into it. Listen to your soul. Because there's so many things out here um, that can act as clues, that can put you in the right direction. All it takes is like that one little push and then you know you're off to the races. The fear of the black Hebrew is the fear of the black superhero. Because you know, if, if you think about it, the things that we do, the world eventually starts to copy. So if they see us doing it, eventually they're going to think, well, hell, I can do that too. And that's a scary thing to the people who, the so-called people who control the world and want to keep things the way that they are. Because it's much easier to control an ignorant population than it is to control one that's fully aware of their capabilities. So, um, there are books in the Bible that were taken out. Uh, you know, there were a bunch of councils of Nicaea where they decide, okay, which books are we going to keep in here and which books are we going to take out? With the goal being like Jesus came down here and left these teachings, but his main idea was telling you, hey, you can do these things too. They had to take those books out of the Bible. Um, but the truth can't be hidden for long because now we have something called the Nag Hammadi Scriptures. Um, and it says on the back of this, the year is 1945 at the foot of a cliff along the Nile River near the city of Nag Hammadi, an Egyptian peasant unearths a large storage jar containing ancient manuscripts. The discovery turns out to be one of the greatest archeological discoveries of the past century. A treasure of fourth century texts, the manuscripts are the scriptures of the ancient mystical tradition commonly called Gnosticism, from the Greek gnosis, that is, secret knowledge. It is a discovery that challenges everything we thought we knew already about the early Christian church, ancient Judaism, and Greco-Roman religions. The Nag Hammadi scriptures is the most complete and up-to-date English language edition of these sacred texts from Egypt. Um, blah, 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 right? So there's books that were taken out of the Bible, and these, these books tell a, a different story from the one that we've been getting. Um, the Book of Thomas is, uh, is one of my favorite out of here. And you know, I haven't read this entire thing yet, but whenever I do turn to this, there's always something that sticks out. Um, hmm. Remember I said the knowledge of self is the, name, is the main knowledge that you want to obtain, right? Knowing yourself. And when you think you've learned all that there is to know about yourself, dig a little deeper and you'll find even more. You'll keep digging till you find, wow, me and the creator are one. God does not exist outside of his creation. So if God is the alpha and the omega, the beginning, the end, the ending and everything, then how can you not be God? How can you not be a part of God? You know, one of the biggest tricks they played on us was making us see God as something outside of ourselves. But there's divinity all around you. Even in those people that you don't like, that's God too. So it says in the book of Thomas, So while you are walking with me, though you do lack understanding, and this is Jesus talking, already you have obtained knowledge and you will be called one who knows himself. For those who have not known themselves have known nothing, but those who have known themselves already have acquired knowledge about the death of the all, the all being God. There's something else I want to read out of here. Um, the intelligent person Okay, let me start above. If you wish to become perfect, keep these sayings. If not, the name for you is ignorant, since an intelligent person cannot associate with a fool. The intelligent person is perfect in all wisdom, but to the fool, good and evil are the same thing. The wise person will be nourished by truth, 
and will be like a tree growing by the stream of water. Some people have wings but rush towards visible things that are far from truth. The fire that guides them gives them an illusion of truth. It will shine on them with a perishable beauty and it will imprison them in dark delight and capture them in sweet smelling pleasure and it will make them blind with insatiable desire, inflame their souls, and be like a stake that is jammed into their heart and can never be removed. Like a bit in the mouth, it leads them according to its own wish. It has bound them with its chains and tied all their limbs with the bitterness of the bondage of desire for those visible things that perish and change and fluctuate impulsively. You know, we live in um, like a consumer society. It's all about consumption of material things. Um, and with that, it, it, it brings this idea of never being satisfied. Like I always need more. I gotta have more. I have to consume more. Oh, I have a 2022 vehicle three years from now that may not be good enough now I want something better or I have the latest iPhone next year they have another iPhone coming out that does just a few more different things and it's like oh no I need this you know our, our entire society seems like in capitalism is driven by consumption of immaterial of material things that aren't real to begin with and these material things would never satisfy your soul and that's another thing that, you know, the celebrities that push the idea of uh, just having money and buying all these material things, they don't ever get in trouble. But the ones that, that uh, start pushing ideas that get you to think a little bit deeper, those are the ones that the, the machine will turn you against. And, you know, there was another quote that I wanted to uh, give to you guys. Uh, this one is from Malcolm Metz, and he's basically talking about the media and how do you have to be careful of them because they have the power to decide who is good and who is evil. So um, if the media is vilifying somebody, really going out of their way to make that person seem like they're just the worst thing on the planet, you need to dig a little deeper and go see, okay, what exactly are they talking about? Because you may have a different opinion of that. And the media has been used like this in a, for a long time. You know, the they'll play like they love Martin Luther King Jr. now. But when he was on the planet, when he was doing his work, they hated him. They were saying he was a troublemaker. And now, you see, we have a MLK Boulevard in every hood across America. Um, we have a MLK holiday. But, you know, people fought that when it first came around. It was some states was like, no, nah, we, don't, we don't want no MLK holiday. Forget that. So that's an example of uh, at one point they hated him. The media was portraying him to be this horrible person. But then now that they know that can, they can use that image, now they're going to show him as being a hero. Said I did not keep that same energy. <laughs> it's the power of the media. We can either make you or break you. And the ones that they make are the ones that aren't going to you know, cause any trouble. They're going to go along to get along. One of the things that Kanye said, or Ye said, that stuck out to me, he said, you want to hear the, the real anti-Semitism? He said, I'ma kill this nigga, I'ma fuck his bitch. I'ma kill this nigga, I'ma fuck his bitch. If you go on iTunes right now, or Apple Music, there's a bunch of songs that have that same idea. It's like we push that on ourselves. And music is powerful. We know that. So when a music artist like Ye or a music artist that's as big as Ye comes out and he starts trying to get us to think a little bit differently. Nah, that's scary. Because those thoughts that stay in your mind, the things that, that run constantly in there, you project that out into your reality. I really saw this uh, when I went off to school. I went off to Albany State. Uh, there was a song called Party Like a Rockstar that came out and tatted up and when those songs came out people went out in droves excuse me and started dressing like black rock stars or they went out and like 
got hella tattoos. So many people got tattoos during that time period. And that was from the influence of the music. You know, I know you've probably been in the club at some point and uh, the DJs, they play a, a, a very big factor in how the party's gonna go. Now, they play the right kind of music they can almost guarantee there's about to be a fight that breaks out based on the music that's playing. You know, it gets you all riled up. And that's not an accident. Music is powerful. So again, when you have a, a music artist of uh, Ye's caliber or a celebrity of Kanye's caliber out here telling you a truth, getting you to think a little bit differently, getting you to know that, yo, the Hebrews originally were black. Uh, that's dangerous. They have to uh, stamp that down. You know, Farrakhan's been speaking on this for years. You know, they banned him off of all social media because they say, oh, his, his remarks are anti-Semitic. Uh, the Nation of Islam have two books called The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews that they banned off of Amazon because, it, you know, it tells the truth that they don't want out there. They got to, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Keep that to the side. You can't have people knowing that. Now you have to go directly to the Nation of Islam. Go to their website to get those books. Um, but you know, it's it's bigger than just one race. Because remember, you know, the planet started off black. So everybody that you see on the planet now comes from us. So that blood can be traced back to a common source. So it's like... A, Again, like I said, they, they don't want us knowing that we all have abilities and powers that are out of this world. But as long as we remain ignorant, as long as they can keep the originators of the planet preoccupied and thinking about, you know, trivial things, that gives them a much greater grasp of control in this place. But as soon as we start thinking otherwise and we start, you know, doing a little bit more into gaining knowledge of self, that's when the paradigm starts to shift and it doesn't take a lot that's the scary thing too it's not going to take a whole lot of us being on the same page it's going to take those individuals doing that serious work getting in that serious study that's going to change the vibration and you know you're getting there when you stop reacting emotionally to the things that they have going on um, last book I want to share with y'all is Seth Speaks by Jane Roberts. Now, Jane Roberts was a woman who would go into a meditative trance and she would channel this entity named Seth. And Seth would come through and drop like some serious wisdom on her. And they put it into books and they shared it with the world. Um, it's one of the first books that I found once I started my journey into consciousness. And I'm so appreciative of this book because it, it helped make a lot of things make sense. Um, so the passage I want to read for you guys comes from Probabilities, that's chapter 17, Probabilities, the nature of good and evil and religious symbolism. The soul stands at the center of itself, exploring, extending its capabilities, excuse me, extending its capacities in all directions at once. Involved in issues of creativity, each one highly legitimate. Um, you know, we've seen movies about the multiverse, right? We had one that came out with, with Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And there was another one that came out this past summer. Uh, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. That deals with the multiverse as well. So your soul is not just having an experience in your physical form right now. It's spread out in a bunch of different directions it's in this, and it's all happening simultaneously. And when you go to sleep, you get glimpses into those different worlds that you're experiencing. And that's how you grow. Um, and I think that's pretty amazing. So in this current reality, you know, that's just one aspect of yourself. Um, check this out. Quite simply, and in a way that you cannot presently understand, evil does not exist. However, you are obviously confronted with what seem to be quite evil effects. Now, it has been said often that there is a God, so there must be a devil. 
or if there is a if there is good there must be evil this is like saying that because an apple has a top it must have a bottom but but without any understanding of the fact that both are a portion of the apple we go back to our fundamentals you create reality through your feelings thoughts and mental actions some of these are physically materialized others are actualized in probable systems remember when i said your thoughts shape this reality and that's why you know the powers that be do so much to try to control the things that you think about because what stays on your mind you're going to project out into this reality you must understand that each mental act is a reality for which you are responsible uh, remember what they said uh, be careful of your thoughts because they become things or you speak things into existence I used to hear that from uh, old church people all the time that is what you are in this particular system of reality for as long as you believe in the devil for example you will create one that is real enough for you and for the others who continue to create him because of the energy he is given by others he will have a certain consciousness of his own, but such a mock devil has no power or reality to those who do not believe in his existence. Um, you ever seen the movie Exorcist? Uh, you know, exorcisms are like a real thing that, you know, they send priests out to do. But, you know, there's never been a case of a priest having to go and do an exorcism on somebody who doesn't believe in demons and the devil. The only way that stuff is allowed into your mind is if you believe it to be real. Your mind makes it real. He is, in other words, uh, a superlative hallucination. As mentioned earlier, those who believe in the hell and assign themselves to it through their belief can indeed experience one, but certainly in nothing like eternal, stern, eternal terms. No soul is forever ignorant. Now, those who have such beliefs actually lack a necessary deep trust in the nature of consciousness of the soul and the all that is. They concentrate upon not what they think of as the power of good, but fearfully upon what they think of as the power of evil. The hallucination is created, therefore, out of fear and of restriction. The devil idea is merely the mass projection of certain fears, mass and that is produced by many people, but also limited in that there have always been those who rejected this principle. It all comes back down to like your mind, what you believe to be true. And you'll make these things happen to a certain extent, but that's only to play out and teach you a greater lesson. So if you believe that you, uh, you need to be punished after you die, you will experience some type of punishment. But like Seth said, it's not an eternal one. Because, you know, that was one of the things that uh, that I know set me apart when I was little, when I would go to church. And uh, I, they would explain hell to me. And it just blew my mind as a child. I said, wait, wait, you mean to tell me that I can go somewhere and be there and be in trouble and be in punishment and tormented forever? And that's it? Wow. But you know, that's an incredible idea for the church to put out, uh, the Catholic Church to put out as a means of control. Because if I can keep you fearful um, of where I think, of where you think you're going to go after you die, then I can control what you're doing on the planet. We do the same thing with children, uh, especially the ones we teach about Santa Claus. You tell them, yo, if uh, you don't behave, Santa's not going to bring you anything. So what do the children do? Oh, they, they're going to act right. They're going to behave because they want that reward. Excuse me. Think about what they do to these celebrities. So if you say something that we don't want you to say, thing, or if you say what we deem to be, you know, taboo, you say that, you're going to be in trouble. And that's enough to keep a lot of them, you know, playing, uh, playing that game, staying in line. You know, I remember uh, it was one of the NBA finals and Steph Curry's wife uh, got mad and went on Twitter and said, yo, the NBA is rigged. <laughs> and uh, 
it was like some backlash from that. That's when Cleveland came from being down and they came back and won that series when Golden State only had to win one more game. Um, that's never happened before in the finals in the NBA. But to me, it seemed like yo, that was punishment to Steph and his team. Like, yo, you better control your woman. You can't have her out here telling the truth and messing up the money. Uh, yeah, the NBA to me is rigged. NFL, I was convinced it was rigged ever since they didn't give the ball to Marshawn Lynch. Uh, <laughs> when he was playing for uh, the Seahawks. Um, and again, that's, a, that's an emotional thing for people. We live vicariously through a lot of these athletes. You know, you hear people say, yo, we got a game today. We're playing so-and-so and so-and-so. And it's like, nah, they have a game today. You're just going to watch. You're not playing. Now, if you was out there playing, yeah, you could say we have a game today. But you get so emotionally attached to these teams they, uh, they designed it that way. That's another part of the distraction. Don't gain knowledge yourself. Pay more attention to these sports teams, to these athletes. And, you know, we give them millions upon millions of dollars. So in the back of your mind, there's like this hope that, you know, maybe one day, you know, when you're a child, maybe I can make it to the NBA or the NFL. Or maybe one of my children can make it to the NBA or the NFL and we get all this money and now we can be living good. We can buy all these material possessions that we don't really need. It's a game. And the game is designed to keep you from having knowledge of self. You know, books can't teach you everything. But they can point you in the right direction. They can, you know, get the ball rolling. And that's what I love about them. There's so many, there's so much good knowledge out there hidden away from books and all you have to do is pick it up and read. So that's one of the things that I encourage you to do. Um, I don't have a physical copy of it, but there's a book by Horace Butler called When Rocks Cry Out. And it talks about the original Hebrews. And what's even more amazing about that book is that it speaks about how the Egypt that you read about or those holy sites that you read about in the Bible that make it seem like it's in Africa. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of that stuff actually took place in the Americas. North and South America, to be exact. You know, we have pyramids over here. We have mounds over here. We know that those ancient civilizations that existed here were melanated people. That's another way to, uh, to you know, distract you from the origins. They make you, they want to make you seem like you're less special than what you are. You are very special. The land that you're living on is special, and your ancestors have been here. So again, just a recap of those books. Uh, check out "When Rocks Cry Out" by Horace Butler. Uh, check out "Seth Speaks" by Jane Roberts. Um, the Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall. The Nag Hammadi Scriptures by various authors. The Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Christ, because Christ is a title. A title that's possible for you to obtain. And The Seven Laws of Dark Power by Brother Panic. You can get that from his website, occultlectures.com. Um, hopefully, I, uh, I could turn you on to something. Hopefully, this was enlightening for you. You know, if not, that's cool, too. Maybe it's just not your time. But for those of you who do have a curiosity about these things, for those of you that, that's, you know, something inside you saying, you know, something's not quite right with the world. I need to find out what it is. I need to find out more about myself. Start digging. Start having some alone time. Start really getting to know yourself. Because when you get to know yourself, you're getting to know God. You're getting to know a different aspect of God. Peace. Be safe. Be loved. And remember, you are powerful.